Wilson Morales from Black from the TV. Hello, folks. Good to see you guys again. Hello. Hi, Wilson. How are you? Now, coming into season two, obviously we won't spoil anything to people see it, but my question is, does Kate have more of an appreciation for how, knowing how much drama comes along with the job? You would hope she would. Mm -hmm. uh, one would oh. hope. Hal would hope she would. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I think, um, yes, I do think now fully being a boss and maybe the first time you realize how much of a boss you are is when you've made a, a massive mistake where you're responsible for people. And I think that is weighing heavy on Kate in, in the beginning of this season. Um, and I do think she recognizes that Hal has done this for a long time. I still think she's judgmental of what he does. <laughs> that said. <laughs> I don't think she's letting him off the hook that much. But um, <laughs> but yes, I do think that's a color. A color. A color that is added to their, subtle hue, their subtle relationship. Adjustment. Yeah. And you know how, you know, when you're top on the call sheet and you're talking to me now, at least we know you ain't going out in that black. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you I'm here know, to so, say. So they, yeah, they, they would have had to be so easy. Yeah, yeah, right? Yes. You're so, alive. Having said that, you know, my question is, you know, he's always looking like he's got one foot in, one foot out. You know, what's his end game? Mm. <laughs> well, his end game, I think, he wants them both to be in the optimal position to do what they want to do which is about what they started for. These are serious mm. politicians who really believe in making things better for people. You know, mm -hmm. and he very much wants her to be the vice president. This is he was he was onto this before she was. He is the one of the key instigators of this that in a way has manipulated her into what he believes is best for her mm. and for something that, that she it, and in a way that he thinks she will benefit from and that she will truly appreciate and allow her to flourish. Um, he's always got one eye for something for himself, but not in some despicable Machiavellian way. He has all the powers of a Machiavellian, but he uses them, I believe, to for good ends. He's always <coughs> aware of one narrative, its counter narrative, the potential criticisms, the joke in the room, um, who's got the power, who's coming up, who's going down, and five different plays. And he can still make the wrong choice sometimes because he's very bold and he goes with his gut. And that makes Oops. him, uh, you know, he can sometimes do things that cause problems. But he can be really, really handy too. <clears throat> now that we're in season two and hopefully more, Kara, are you now more comfortable playing this role? And do you take more into consideration when you see the person who has this job overseas, like you have an understanding as to what they're going through. You even know this is fictional, but you never know. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, I love playing this part. It is It is truly, it is so fun I, to be able to play someone in this world, which is such a smart, fun world to play in, and that she's such a hot mess in, amidst that like world is so much fun. So yes, the... The dip diplomatic world has been incredibly patient and gracious with us <laughs> to this point. Mm -hmm. I hope it continues. We'll see. Um, but because of that, they've been incredibly kind to us. And the, for instance, the real American ambassador to the UK, Ambassador Jane Hartley, and I have become friendly and I've dined with her many times in London and at her home at Winfield House with really incredible people. And... Um, it is incredible what they do. I mean, they are they are fiercely intelligent. They are so fast. They are incredibly easy uh, amongst people. She stood up at a table of you know twenty people with President Obama and all these heavy hitters, and just is just easy and gracious and knows how to talk and you know snappy. I am not so easy. I was probably downing alcohol as quickly as I could in that probably. cocktail hour, and uh, you know sweating uncontrollably. But you know these people are amazing and it truly is that's what we're hoping that they understand it's a love letter to you know the state department and their sacrifice and their service they give up their lives or jane for instance she she you're on the road always and um they they sacrifice a lot and for our country for humankind and it is it's compelling 
Looking forward to seeing what happens next. Uh, I now know what to do with a safety pin when I have it in my wallet. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Without right. <laughs> and we'll talk down the road. Keep alive. Stay alive. You we'll too. Thank you, you too. Take much. care. Wilson Morales from Black from TV. Hey, folks. How's it going? Hi, Wilson. Really how well. are you? You know, when I see you guys here together, and I, and I wonder, like, what's your, you know, what's your commonality? Because you're not, and it almost seems together. And I go, each of you guys kind of serve like the voice of reason when you're in a certain yeah. group or so forth. Yeah. Would you say that? You know, like, what's Denison's endgame? <laughs> what's Ooh. Denison's endgame? What do you think, Ali? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think Denison has, is pretty politically ambitious. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so power, I think power you know, is Denison's endgame. You, 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 I don't know if you heard this expression or you heard this expression from your parents. You're going to have to work 10 times as hard. You're going to have mm. to work hard, twice as hard, 10 times as hard. And so the, and I was always told, you know, you're, you're the head and not the tail. You are the head mm. and not the tail. So I think there's a lot of Denison has heard these same things. And so it's strive for that, strive for that, strive for that. That's his end goal. And then there's this thing underneath where he's felt this connection to someone. Uh -huh. And that drive for ambition and goal is there. But what is this thing that's festering underneath? What is this thing that's burning underneath? And how, how does he reconcile that? So is his end goal to serve that thing? Or is his end goal to serve that thing? Or can he do both? I think he's uh -huh. figuring it out. And then you have Idra. Obviously, she's no longer with Stuart anymore. So my question is, where does her true loyalties lie? Where are you the know, true she, loyalties? You know, like, uh, yeah, like, who is she talking to? You know, she ain't got Stuart to talk to and confide in him. Listen, Idra, does, Idra is a lone wolf. Like, I think Stuart was a... Was a, a a break in the programming, you know what I mean? So oh, I, a couple of years. Yeah, so <laughs> I think, I mean, listen, her real confidant, if she has one at this point, is Kate. She and Kate are trying to solve, figure out who is responsible for this explosion. And um, But I, I, I don't think Idra does a lot of um, moaning to anybody. I think, I think Idra likes a stiff drink at the end of the night and maybe a sleeping pill, and that's how she gets through the day. I wondered what you were going to say. Yeah. <laughs> but I also see that she knows what she's doing because there are various times she goes, she's protective of her job. Yes. You know, she knows how far Kate can go. Well, I can't do it because, you know, I could be the liable one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There's there's rules for sure. You know, and when you talk about Dennis and his endgame, it's like, you know, how far can he go? You know, we haven't had any brother prime ministers. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, maybe in the world of the diplomat. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, you know. <laughs> yeah. But how much fun is it coming back season two? I know six episodes. The way it ended, I'm like, is that more? Is that it? I know it's it's <laughs> quick. Are you kidding me? It's real quick. You know, so like, yeah. So let's hope we can get to season three. Obviously, to see where it goes. You know, I think with your characters, it's fun for the writers to play with, especially you. You know, Ali. It's like you never know where they where they're gonna take your character. <laughs> you know, it's like, do you know how far she can go? Like, mm. even though she's just there, she's there to do a job. Where do you see her going in the end? I mean, I think Idra probably one day would want to run run things, like run the CIA back in deep. But I, I mean, I think she is, I think she likes to be in the action. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm curious to see. I would love to see Idra lose it. I just want to know what that looks like. I, I want to, I just, I want to know what happens and when she just surrenders and loses it. But I, I don't know that you'll ever see that. She's, she's a pretty cool customer. <laughs> Dave, you know, David, I asked Carrie, like, you know, when you take on this role, now you've done it for two seasons. You know, are you more considerate to the person who actually has this job? So when you're reading any of the things that happens overseas, do you have an inkling as to what they're going through? 100%. Um, I, well, I don't know if I have an inkling as to what they're going through, but certainly the kind of understanding for the, the ability to hold different perspectives at the same time and then speak in front of the camera knowing that whatever you say is going to really alienate and upset one one group of people and please another. And I think before I would look at politicians, make speeches or decisions and think, why, why are you saying that? That's so off or yeah, right on. That's exactly where you need to be. Now, I think I can see why you're saying that and sort of understand it. I might not agree with it, but I kind of understand it a little. Uh -huh. 
What about you, Allie? You know, when you take on a role and it goes on, whether it's a movie or a series, do you take stock into the background of the character that you're playing? Do I take stock into the background? What do you mean? Do I does the character infuse my life or? Uh... No, no, no. Like, like you know, you know, like you understand their role. You know, like their jargon and so forth, as opposed to just playing a part, reading a script. Like you have an understanding. You know, like you meet somebody. Like you know, your own oh, research. Oh, yes, of course. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think that um, I just I have it just deepens my respect. I mean, I think I now understand. Um, it's, I really see foreign service. Really, it's an act of service. And I think as actors, we often think we're putting a lot of cost on our personal life in order to pursue this um, passion of ours. But people who work in foreign service, I mean, that is truly a life's dedication. And also living away from home, um, infiltrating new communities, create it, it, that. So I really have such respect for um, what they're doing. And that, and it's not glamorous the way what we get to do, you know. So it's good to see you guys. Obviously, I'm sure we're going to get a season three because you can't end off the way it ended. <laughs> you know, don't leave me hanging. You know, so I will hopefully talk to you guys next season. Don't say. I hope so. Gonna Listen, happen. we're going to try. Start the petition, brother. I know it's going to happen. <laughs> okay? like, we're gonna, we're sure. We just got to wait for the date they're going to announce. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Wilson. Thank see you, ya. Wilson. Take care, folks.